Africa, researchers decided to do something radical, conduct chimp archaeology, and that changed everything. In the Thai forest in the Ivory Coast, primatologists have been watching chimps use granite hammer stones to break open nuts on stone anvils for decades. Recently, primatologist Christoph Bosch and archaeologist Julio Mercator decided to start digging to see if they could find older nut-cracking tools. The first time archaeology had been applied to chimps and they found what they were looking for in 4,300-year-old sediments. That's more than 200 generations of a chimp stone age, meaning that chimpanzees couldn't have copied toolmaking from humans. There were no human settlements in the Thai forest that long ago. But some take this as evidence of a far more earth-shattering possibility that stone tool use goes back at least as far as that critical moment when human and chip ancestors parted ways. They use tools, stone tools, and in our human history, we have also used stone tools. So it's a shared behavior, and if that's so, it might go right back to the beginnings and even back to the common ancestor. Here's the catch. Clearly human-made stone tools like these don't appear in the record until two and a half million years ago. The common ancestor may have lived five to seven million years ago. Where are the tools that fill that four million year gap? Harris thinks they're out there, but they've just never been recognized. They look too much like natural stones. So he's got his graduate students copying chimp tool use in the lab, hoping to create an instantly recognizable signature dividing tool from natural stone. And you can see very clearly that it leaves a, a pit or an indentation in that rock, and that's very different than the other parts of the surface of this uh, rock in front of me. Once they've created this template of iconic tool use markings, they'll start searching in fossil beds where our earliest ancestors have been found, hoping to find the stones that will rewrite our earliest prehistory. This is such novel work. It's, it, it's, we're right at the, I, I was going to say the cutting edge, I should say, perhaps say the pounding edge of, of uh, studies in this field. I'm convinced we're going to find these, these pounding tools. The notion that tool use goes back that far is catching on among scientists. One day, probably, we'll be able to find sites like the ones that Mercada analyzed in West Africa, and that would be proof that the Australopithecines did use stone tools. Absolutely. Tool use goes back to the last common ancestor, I would say. Anthropologists Cricket Sands and David Morgan have spent a decade studying chimps in the remote Guologo Triangle in the Republic of Congo. Hoping to capture the tool use behavior of these chimps, they set up camera traps around termite mounds. The images they captured simply blew their minds. No matter how much camouflage the scientists put around the camera traps, the chimps noticed them right away, even using tools to probe them. But what was even more remarkable was the discovery that the Guologo chimps were not just using tools, they were using an entire tool kit, further narrowing the human-ape divide. Having selected both thick sticks and thin ones, they carry them with them to the termite mound, then use them in sequence. Then they'll grab the stout stick and hold it in both hands, and they'll actually use a foot sometimes as leverage. And after they've created a tunnel into the nest, they'll pull out the stick and they'll smell it to see if they've killed any termites underneath the ground. And if they're successful, they'll take their herb stem and they thread that into the tunnel and they extract termites. 
Chimps in Central Africa have a real sweet tooth, and their honey-gathering toolkits can be even more sophisticated. In fact, a researcher recently discovered no fewer than five tools used at a honey-gathering site. So a big tool to pound open the hive. And then they open the hive, and they can't quite reach in with their hands, they would fashion a dipping probe to then follow in, or a lever open tool to pry open the nest a bit further. But you see all these tools being used one after another. It's really very exciting. When a chimpanzee creates different tools, carries them to the site of termites or honey, and uses them in sequence for different purposes, they're showing incredibly sophisticated planning and deliberation. This too was once thought to be beyond the mental capacity of any animals but humans. Well, what the toolkit does is to show us that the chimpanzee mind is not just responding straight away to an immediate problem, but it is uh, being more creative. So here we have evidence of a relatively advanced cognitive ability. For Jill, Cricket's and Dave's footage was a revelation and now she'll be on the lookout for toolkits among her singular chimpanzees. But she still doesn't have the critical video of her chimp's most extraordinary tool making and tool use. A complete hunt. From the manufacture of a tool through the killing of the prey. Fortunately, the horizon is darkening, ushering in the season of the rains. It is in the next few weeks that she'll have the best chance of capturing her chimp Amazons on the hunt. Weeks later than usual, the skies finally crack open and lash the woodland savanna of Fungoli with wind and rain. Water instantly changes the landscape, eliciting dormant green from the grasses and trees. like an alien force through dry gullies. And a very special place begins to fill with water. Jill has a good idea where the chimps might be headed today. After six months of blistering heat, everyone will be dying for a dip in the pool.